Hello and welcome to another tutorial video here from Zenata Consulting. My name is Tyler Colts. In this video, we're going to be going through a quick overview of Zoho Calendar. And this video is actually an excerpt of a full webinar that we did on calendar meetings and bookings. So if you find this useful, maybe consider checking that one out as well. Before we do jump in, I want to ask if you do enjoy or find value in this video, please be sure to like and subscribe down below. If it sparks any questions, feedback or video requests, drop those down in the comments as we do try to read and respond to each and every one of those on our weekly show Azaz. Without any further ado, let's jump right on into the video. So here I am inside of Zoho Calendar. I'm just in one of our demo accounts. I assure you my calendar is not quite this empty on a, uh, a normal normal week. So we're looking at our calendar here. It's going to work pretty similar to most calendars that you're comfortable with. Um, of course, over on the left-hand side, we've got uh, the option to look at multiple different calendars. So here under my calendars, these are like the ones unique to your account. Um, you can, of course, have multiple, right? So if you wanted to have a support calendar as well as your own personal, you can do that. Um, if I wanted to add one here, you know, maybe I'll just call this like my sales calendar. I'd probably want to include this in my free or busy sharing. Essentially, if I do want to give someone a peek into when I'm available, if I had a sales call, I would want that to show as busy. Uh, of course, I can color code it. Let's pick something other than green just so that um, our events can be easily distinguished. So now I've got these two different calendars on here under my personal. Now we can also have various group calendars. So here I have a consultant calendar. We take a quick look at the settings. Um, this is actually defined as a group from the Zoho One level. So any groups that you have at Zoho One will actually show up and you can use them to create a shared calendar within the people that are in that group. I could also create my own. So if I just go ahead and add a group calendar, call it our example group, a different color just for clarity. And here, you know, if I don't want to create the group using the information at the Zoho One kind of admin suite, uh, I can do that same thing here by just kind of adding anybody that I'd like to this particular user group, and they'll show up on this calendar when I select it. So pretty similar functionality there to what you're probably used to within, you know, most calendaring tools in that you're able to kind of easily select, show and hide various different individual and group calendars. Outside of that, when we go to actually schedule a meeting, of course, we're able to just click and drag here. I can select if I want to add a unique color for this particular meeting, I can do so. Give it a title. You know, the dates and times selected just based on where I clicked and dragged. Able to invite any participants. So maybe I want to add, you know, example at Zanata.com. I can do so. Here, we can actually have this be a Zoho meeting. This is an integration that pretty much comes out of the box. You don't really need to do much for selecting this. There is an option to make it the default where it will do a Zoho meeting, which I'll show in just a moment. But let's say we do want to add this with a Zoho meeting. We do have some additional options as well. If I want this to be private, meaning other people on my team wouldn't be able to see it, I can make that choice. I can add URLs if I want a certain document to show up, make it available for the client set up reminders, give it an example description, right? All, all the kind of good stuff that you are probably used to in your current calendaring tool. Last but not least, one little nice thing here, we're not going to go too far down the rabbit hole on this, but you can actually have this automatically associate into CRM tasks as well as Zoho Notebook. So there are a couple baked in integrations here when we're looking just at the particular events. So go ahead and save that. Now, I can actually send notifications as well. So if I want to notify the attendees of that meeting invite, I can do so. I can also have that send the email notification to me as well. If you like to have those in the inbox, you know, maybe you categorize them, save them for later. In this case, this is a fake email. So I'm going to click none just so that we don't bounce an email uh, here that it's going to send out. Um, but obviously, you would just pick that according to your own preferences. One nice thing that you'll see here when you do have a Zoho calendar event that has a Zoho meeting 
Um, you can actually just click it to start that meeting from right there within your calendar. Similar to what you might see with like the URL in a, in a Google or Outlook meeting, but I kind of like that it's this little button that clearly identifies this is a Zoho meeting. And then you can just click to start without having to like expand the meeting and find the link. It's a nice little usability feature there that, that I like about Zoho Calendar. Other than that, not too much crazy stuff here when it comes to the calendar view. Of course, you know, you're able to select various time periods, go forward and backwards in time. Maybe I want to view this by month, by day, by, you know, X period. Of course, you're able to do that here inside of uh, Soho Calendar. One last little feature I'll highlight before we get into the settings is this yet to respond option. This again, nothing game changing, but it is kind of nice. If you have received calendar invites that you have not yet responded to, those will show up here. I actually do kind of like that because sometimes I'll get meeting invites for next week. Like normally when I look at my calendar, I'm looking at it on a weekly basis. So I might not see those things that are scheduled for next week where people have sent me invites. So just that consolidated place can be kind of nice to have. But outside of that, again, not too crazy here on the front end of Zoho Calendar. On the back end, in the settings cog up here in the top right, there are just a few that I'll show. Obviously, we're able to do some theming, pick the colors. I'm a big fan of night mode, so I almost always have this on. I'll keep it light for now, but I'm, I'm a big dark mode guy myself. Obviously, date formats, desktop notifications, if you want to subscribe to those, can be pretty nice to have. A few things here, you know, time zone, of course, we're able to set our time zone. Calendar view. You know, if you like to do a Sunday to Monday, a Saturday to Friday, you know, whatever your preference of calendar uh, orientation is, you can define that here. Now, I'm not going to go through all settings, but I do want to highlight this one. So I mentioned earlier, you can actually have Zoho meeting the default option on um, any of the meetings that you create. So you can actually set that up here under event settings and conference settings. One important note here, if you're like a remote company and all of your meetings are Zoho meetings, turn this on, no brainer. If some of your meetings are not going to be driven via Zoho, you may want to consider leaving this off purely just because if you've sent an invite and forgot to turn this on, you know, a client, a prospect might misconstrue that they're actually supposed to join that Zoho meeting. When in fact, it's actually an event for like a site visit or a survey, you know, something on premise. So just be careful with that. Anytime we're setting a default, we just want to, you know, go through and make sure that's going to work in all scenarios. Outside of that, of course, you know, some of those settings here are going to be repeated, right? So my calendars, app calendars, group calendars, all of these kind of come via, you know, either that left hand bar or here inside of the settings. The only one that's different here is app calendars. So these are actually the connected calendars from other Zoho applications. I will circle back around on this and show that under our integration settings. But other than that, nothing here too crazy on the Zoho calendar side. You know, it's a good tool. Doesn't have all of the integrations that something like Google Calendar or maybe, you know, Office 365 are gonna have. But if you are someone who is, you know, on Zoho One, you're using all the various Zoho applications, you very well may be able to save yourself a little bit of money by considering a swap over to Zoho Calendar. 